Welcome to the module Basics of Nutrition. My name is Cyrus and I will guide you through all the lessons in this module. Our three main goals are to learn about the fundamental compounds that make up our food, to discover the key developments in the history of nutritional sciences and to understand the role of macro and micronutrients in our health. At the end of this module, you will be able to describe the role of carbohydrates, proteins and fats in our diet, list the most important milestones in the history of nutritional sciences, explain some of the common myths and preconceptions about nutrition, deficiencies and the NCD crisis, talk about the health-providing properties of vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals and fiber, and give general tips on the best dietary patterns for optimal health. Now, this might all sound quite theoretical, but don't worry. This module will be a bit different from your typical biochemistry course. We've made sure to include practical information whenever possible so that you take away clinically relevant nutrition knowledge that will help you become even better physicians and healthcare professionals. On top of that, we also include some fun nutrition history facts. Knowing how scientists develop their understanding of nutrition will help us understand the current approaches to nutrition and health. So, how does this module work? This module consists of a series of video lessons. At the end of each lesson, you'll take a short quiz to test your knowledge before moving on to the next lesson. You can complete the module at a pace that works for you and your schedule. Watch the videos and take the quizzes as many times as you like until you feel confident that you've soaked up the information. Whenever you see this icon and hear this sound, the information I gave you is an important fact. All of these key facts and figures will be collected throughout the module and sent to a cheat sheet. That's enough technical talk, let's move on to the good stuff. Allow me to introduce the contents of this module to you. Throughout this module, we will be traveling across time. We use the best, free technology available on the market today to bring you the most cutting-edge special effects. So you don't get lost, every time we go back in time, you will see this animation. <coughs> And when we come back to the present, you'll see this animation. Oh, we went a bit too far. Uh, b back up a hundred years, please. On our journey across time, we will meet some famous historical figures who helped shape the nutritional sciences as we know them today. In order to give you the most immersive experience possible, we use the same top-notch, free technology in order to most accurately recreate what these personalities might have sounded like. Let's begin with our first stop, which will help us understand what kind of research shaped the modern perspective of nutrition. So, are you ready for a bit of time traveling? Let's jump in our time machine and get going. <laughs> Welcome to the 18th century, where many things that are common knowledge today were yet to be discovered. Ah, bonjour, Monsieur Lavoisier. May I introduce you to the Pan Academy students? Pan students, allow me to introduce you to Antoine Laurent de Lavoisier, the founder of modern chemistry. Monsieur Lavoisier, may we take a look at your lab, please? Well, yes, of course, you are very welcome. Just do not knock anything over. Ah, merci beaucoup. We are in Lavoisier's lab in Paris. Now, one example of something that's just about to be discovered is the idea that our bodies need fuel or energy, as we call it in the 21st century. With this impressive apparatus, Monsieur Lavoisier discovered that our bodies burn fuel in a combustion reaction and also emit CO2 as a byproduct just like the futuristic fuel-burning engines that have only just been developed too. The new discovery that food is fuel for our bodies might not sound like a massive achievement from our perspective today, but as science historian Elizabeth Naswold points out, it was a basis for determining what someone needs to survive, what leads to weight gain, what leads to weight loss, 
what enables physical labor and what the relationship between food and physical labor is. In the end, Lavoisier's research also led to the investigation of food composition, so his work helped kickstart the nutritional revolution that was about to follow. Monsieur Lavoisier, merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Okay, I always enjoy having visitors. Merci pour votre visite. Let's leap forward into the 19th century. <laughs> Chemist Justus von Liebig invented the so-called Kali apparatus, with which he and his doctoral students analyzed the carbon content of numerous organic substances. Or, in other words, he analyzed their carbohydrate content. Two of the many nutritional researchers he trained, von Voigt and von Petzenkofer, built a chamber large enough to hold a large living animal with the purpose of measuring carbon and nitrogen input and output. With this chamber, they were able to estimate human protein requirements. So basically, these folks laid the groundwork for protein shakes. And I guess even back then, they could have become quite rich with that idea. Anyways, a postdoc in von Voigt's lab built another pretty large chamber and determined the energy equivalence of the main food components. His name was Wilbur Olin Atwater and his measurements were of such high precision that we still know them today by his name. The Atwater factors. They describe how many calories are contained in each of the macronutrients, so proteins, carbohydrates and fats. He also coined the term calorie as the energy unit of food. Energy content of food is still important nowadays and we still measure it in kilocalories, although the official unit is kilojoule. One kilocalorie equals about 4.19 kilojoule. In most countries, we find both of these energy values listed on food packaging. Interestingly, the reason for nutritional research back then was quite different. Their focus was not on the health of individuals, but rather on finding the cheapest, easiest methods to feed institutionalized and impoverished populations. We'll take a look at how research shifted towards investigating the relation between nutrition and disease throughout this module. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about the fascinating history of nutritional sciences as we go through the lessons of this module. But for now, let's summarize our takeaways from this introduction. Lavoisier taught us that food is fuel for the body, and researchers in the 19th century coined the term calorie as the energy unit for food. The energy content of food is measured in kilocalories and kilojoules. So, are you ready to learn more about nutrition? Let's get your brains warmed up with a question. Do you know the values of the Atwater factors? Or in other words, do you know how many kilocalories protein, carbohydrate and fat contain per gram? Find out in lesson one, where we'll take a closer look at macronutrients.